bottom of the hour. Um, we're pretending to go on for an hour. Uh, 30 minutes. I'm going to take some phone calls. We will just take nothing but phone calls at the bottom of the next hour. Becky, you can get lined up right now. First time callers just on this food issue. 800 259 9231. 800 259 9231. Uh, the Brexit, all these global meltdowns, uh, it's just out of control. The globalists always plan on having a global crisis that would then bring in a greater EU dictatorship, but instead it's causing nation states to pull out because the liberty movement warned folks. So the point is the elite aren't the only power in this universe. You have to take action, and you are, Thank and you we're starting to gain to ground. GCN. We'll be back in 70 seconds. Let's just get Pachinik on now. I'll say this. The United States is sitting in a better position than many nations. But everything Obama is doing and the globalists are doing is trying to undermine the country. And I'm going to ask Dr. Pachinik this. If the elite are in control of Europe and the United States, they're successfully undermining Russia and China, but they're successfully undermining the American people as well and the family and trying to sabotage our own military. What is going on here? And, and, and Dr. Steve Pachinik of stevepachinik.com he, of course, co-wrote books with Tom Clancy. He was involved in all sorts of clandestine operations, the head of psychological warfare for the State Department. Uh, you, I mean, you couldn't get um, a, a more informed patriotic insider on, been a member of the Council on Foreign Relations until he resigned. He was one of the first prominent people to expose 9-11 as an inside job in early 2002. He exposed the whole Bin Laden hoax accurately. Uh, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. But, Doc, you heard my question. I see his schizophrenic policies, and I get the thing of funding all sides or whatever, but it's, it seems to be beyond that. And I know there's lots of different factions, but why why does our government do a lot of things that actually help American interest, but then other things that actually undermine our interest? Is that just different power structures? Well, it is, uh, Alex, as usual. Our government is very, very self-destructive, in part because it has become so large that one part literally does not know what the other part. For example, the CIA was supplying ammunition and guns to the so-called rebels who were fighting Bashar Assad, while the military was training others who were pro-Assad. I mean, it is so confusing, and that's why one of the reasons we need a president who's been vetted out completely, not just somebody who the CIA wanted up there. We need a president who understands what it is we're doing, where we're going, and has a, a coterie of experience people who have been in crises before. Now, one of the greatest problems in this Brexit is the fact that our government didn't know at all that this was going to happen. Not only was it a binary decision, i.e. either England left or didn't leave, the a country was so convinced and so self-delusional, as was Obama and Kerry, that they really didn't map out what would happen in case this was a, a, a situation. And in fact, it caught it caught them completely flat-footed. And Kerry admitted it, and Obama had to admit it. In fact, Obama went a week before the Brexit in order to make sure that all of the people around him, i.e. the Wall Street bankers, were there to convince Britain that they made, that they rest in the EU. And so they threatened the to hold them hostage. Uh, their bluff got called. Now things are disintegrating. Uh, they're in a lot of trouble. Well, that's correct. The, problem, the, the good news is that God loves drunks and the uh, United States. No matter what happens to us and no matter how incompetent our government is, and it's exceedingly incompetent for reasons that we can go into later on, pro uh, probably because of the entrepreneurial nature of our people and because we're so large and we're blessed by two oceans, it really doesn't affect us. In, a, in, a, in reality, actually, if people are concerned, what I would say to them is to buy stocks that give a dividend and are you know, very secure because basically what you're doing is you're going long with the dollar. Going long with the dollar means that America can bet on the dollar being the supreme currency. And I want to go back to historical precedents where we had brilliant men during the war, World War II, not only Patton, Eisenhower, but we had a gentleman named Morgenthau, a German Jew who figured out very quickly in December of 1944 that in order for America to be a really superpower, we had to denominate all currencies. Uh, Dr. Dr. Pichetti, this is powerful. I want you to start over because this is so important about Brexit, okay. uh, where you're coming from, where we're going, because I remember you on five years ago saying, Europe is going to disintegrate. You watch.
and then basically breaking this down. So let's talk about this arrogance and what that signifies. And we talk about a command center. We are under FEMA. We are under this whole corporate global model. And the people of Europe have discovered that. Eight nations want to leave the euro. It's dictatorial. Uh, we have the Brexit that Obama and others and Hillary, you know, said, oh, you know, they'll never leave. Uh, to me, it seems like a big defeat for globalism. And it seems like they were caught flat-footed. But Dr. Steve Pachinik, uh, former member of the Council on Foreign Relations, best-selling author, one of the founders with General Boykin and others of Delta Force, that's on record, the guy that ran the Camp David Accords. I mean, his pedigree is just that amazing. You can just Google his name and, you know, they're... He can't talk about too much. The Justice Department will come call him into court again, like happens when he comes on the show routinely. Now, because of how secretive, you know, all this stuff is he's been involved in, overthrowing countries, stopping the overthrow of countries. I mean, that's on record. So he's the real deal uh, with a lot of talkers out there. And I tell you, he really predicted four years ago after Benghazi what would happen. We're going to go in. We're going to block these Saudi guys. Other people are trying to double cross us. We're going to stop them. That all came out is what happened. I got other sources that are public, others that aren't, that concurred. Uh, and so I'm just letting you know, he gives us really good intelligence over and over and over and over again. And so what does this British exit mean? Sure, there's going to be shenanigans to try to keep folks in it. I'm not against some union if it's, if it's democratic and empowers people and it's just economic. But when it is arresting people that criticize open borders, when it's totalitarian and wants to arrest global warming deniers, like the Democratic Party platform officially says today, uh, then we know this is an authoritarian movement by the big banks through the Democrats and the Republicans, through the Labor, through the Tory. And, and this is really an awakening moment. But but talking to Pachinik, if you just joined us, he started getting into the fact that it shows the ineptitude, the arrogance, the flat-footedness. And I agree. Look at the Euro bureaucracy that's unelected, but set up from the start to rule it because it started as a coal and steel collective. I mean, it started out as a technocracy, folks. It didn't just become one. They're saying, we're just going to have an EU army, and it's going to take over your militaries. We're going to start commanding them. The bureaucracy is going to put out a report. We're going to bring in new commanders over your commanders. Folks, that is literal occupation. That is like Hitler coming in and putting his French generals in over the French, the Vichy. I mean, I harp on that because it's what's happening. This is so crazy, I can't even believe it. And globalist policies trying to jack up food prices worldwide, trying to bring in a crisis where these guys consolidate control. But what if they bring in a crisis so big it brings them down? By the way, I'm not as sure licking my lips wanting to see the whole system crash. I want these evil globalists at the top to stop wrecking things and basing things on conquest and collapse instead of renaissance. So I'm not looking for some civil war. I'm not looking to, uh, you know, just see Herman Von Rumpy and Merkel's head on a platter. I just realized these people aren't as smart as Napoleon or Hitler. They were bad guys, by the way. Weren't as smart as people before them, and they just think they're invincible because they're in control, and it gets more and more dangerous. So to cover the waterfront, and one of the time we have is Dr. Steve Pachinik, stevepachinik.com, let's walk through this history, where we are, and then I want to ask you about the global economic system because we got FEMA reports and others saying worldwide food crises, you name it. Is that hype or what's going on? Dr. Pachinik, thanks for joining us. Start back over. All right. Uh, I think it's important for the audience to understand we Americans uh, in, in 1944, because of the incredible quality of leaders that we had at that point under FDR, Morgenthau and others in the Treasury developed what was called the Bretton Woods Conference, which basically stated very clearly that for the next half a century to a century, we will have the dollar denominated as the currency of the world. That became so ingrained that anybody who has a chance to go to New Hampshire, Mount Washington, should see that little room which that determined the outcome of American superpower. It was not only our army. It was the brilliance of men who could foresee what would happen to our country. Now, taking that forward, the French came in after World War II, although they were defeated. My father was in the French Army, and the first order he got was retreat. And unfortunately, 2.2 million men retreated. The reality is that France, after World War II, said to the Americans that we have to co-opt the rise of Germany because France had been defeated twice by the Germans in World War I and II. 
So they came together on this theoretical notion, which was total nonsense, to co-opt the Germans by creating a United States of Europe. That, in turn, had no legitimacy. It had no concrete basis. And as Alex told you, it basically was a bunch of bureaucrats, ironically put in the worst country of all, which was not really a country, Belgium, at the site where Napoleon was defeated in 1815, only five days before the Brexit. So in a way, history recapitulates itself when England and Germany defeated France. What this is, is the end of globalization. For five to ten years, I've been saying that the so-called notion of globalization is artificial and not real, because what was happening is the big banks on Wall Street were in fact putting their tentacles out to every country. However, because they're basically so arrogant and inept, like our government, and you saw this in 2008, they quickly ran with Obama to Britain, and before Britain went on the Brexit, they pleaded. These were the major banks, not the regional and local banks. They're very safe, so Americans should understand your local regional banks are fine because of the reserve currencies that were mandated after 2008. What happened is the Goldman Sachs, the Morgan Stanley's, the big unfortunate banks and the, the corrupt ones now had to put in their own uh, tentacles into the different countries as opposed to going through Britain. Our country did not in any way anticipate that this was happening, despite the fact that I would write repeatedly, both in Cyber Command, Cyber Warfare, and the Net Force series by Tom Clancy. I wrote about it in Op Center when Spain broke out and Barcelona broke away from Spain. I kept saying it for five years on the Alex Jones show that this was the beginning of the end of Europe, because Europe is an artificial construct that has no basis for solidity. It's different national characters, 28 to 29, with one currency. The difference is the United States has one currency for 52 states, and we're unified because it's a republic. There may be attempts at a secession, like Texas or others, but I don't think it will be successful as opposed to the devolution of power. So what I've really been talking about, and Alex really pointed this out over the years, is not that the globalists were increasing, is that we have a devolution of power going on all over the world including the Chinese who have to centralize power but are fighting their own corruption in the local areas. The yuan is going down. China will not do well in this. They will try to attempt to make the yuan a currency that's an alternate to the American currency or the British pound. That will not happen. The pound will still remain strong. The euro will fall repeatedly because France has a very low growth rate, and it had before France even attempted to stop the Brexit, it already had riots. What's all the calculus on socialism. bringing in all the refugees? Uh, five million from the Middle East. It's got to be hundreds of thousands, if not millions here. They're covering it up. What is the whole point of bringing in people unskilled, 22% that have TB? I mean, this sounds, I mean, this sounds like treason. Well, the way I looked at it and the way I said it on your show many years ago was that this was Putin's revenge on the takedown of the Soviet Union. I, I, when I listened to Putin many years ago, he's a very clever man. He said, imagine what countries are like when you liberate 20 million people and they have no country, i.e. addressing me and others who are involved in the takedown of the Soviet Union. And I realized that he would, in fact, get into the Syrian war to create this conflagration, support Bashar Assad with Iran, and then allow all of these young men to transfer over into Turkey. Sure, and, and, and of course, he came out yesterday, uh, Putin, and said this, this, this reminds him of the fall of the Soviet Union. Oh, I didn't know that. You see, I had anticipated it, and I warned our people, but again, they didn't listen. Again, our people, you know, this is the point why you're important and why the American public has to listen to you. We've talked about this for years beforehand. I knew our, our government was not qualified to answer this. I knew our government was not even capable of anticipating any of these problems and gaming them out. Unlike the Nixon administration, whatever you could say for Nixon, right or wrong, the man was brilliant. He knew exactly how to game out the Chinese, how to game out the Soviets. Even under the Baker administration, we knew how to game out the Soviet Union under Reagan. And this Our elites don't game anybody. They just get bought off for almost no. nothing. 
I mean, they give up all the power and sovereignty for like a few million dollars a piece. I mean, it's just crazy. Well, in effect, Alex, there is no more sovereignty and they have no power. What you saw Obama doing was to really, again, uh, uh, basically self-destruct. He self-destruct with Osama bin Laden nonsense, which didn't exist, the shooting. With Sandy Hook, a false flag, with another false flag. So he will be known as the sociopath that he is. I said it from the day he came in. He was a CIA recruit, a complete sociopath whose only advantage was... Hey, we know yeah. current FBI agents that have investigated Sandy Hook and think it's a hoax. I mean, it's incredible. I'm not going to get well, into it. Not but only that, the question is, what do we do when we know that our government is tyrannical and is, is capable of killing us and shooting us? It's not just FEMA. The, the question is, really, when will we protest and how will that protest? But, but isn't happen? it clear that it's a criminal element inside our government? Well, the government is criminal. I mean, how do you allow our government to attack the Twin Towers when you have the CIA, the DIA, the military intelligence, you have the soldiers, you have the police, you have Homeland Security, you have the WASP train, Mueller, who says, oh, no, we didn't know about it. And the FBI, the most self-aggrandized organization other than the CIA, repeatedly making mistakes and, 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 and confusing the issue and really getting part of the collusion of, a, of hitting and hurting. And, and then why are they allowing the Islamic invasion? Just so they can have more terror attacks and get more funding? I'm going to ask you that when we come back to our Steve Pachenik's, our guest, analyzing the Brexit. All right, final segment with our guest. I was going to take calls the next segment. You know what? I forgot. We've got a reporter down in the valley where they're admittedly bringing in illegal aliens and putting them on buses. Now, we broke that two years ago. Nobody else covered it. And that's a big deal. It shows the lawlessness, but now it's on ABC News. So we thought we'd go back down there and show folks. So Jakari Jackson, Madame Salazar, and others joining us. Caught red-handed Border Patrol paying to ship illegals deep in the United States. This is the lawlessness. Look at the Sunday Express headline, European Superstate to be unveiled. EU, and we told you this last week, EU nations to be, quote, morphed into one post-Brexit. So you don't have an excuse to leave now. We'll fix that problem. So this shows the incredible totalitarian nature. And obviously, this will just accelerate people wanting to leave even more. Uh, but what is it about tyrants, Dr. Pachinik? They just don't get it. They just, it's, it's like, you know, Catalonia or Catalan, one of the only prosperous areas in Spain, its own culture. Ninety-something percent of people voted to leave. Madrid said you can't. They just said we'll do whatever we want. I mean, how do you stop 90 percent? You can't control 90 percent and make them do what you want. You can only kill them. Yeah, the reason I knew Catalonia would break away from Madrid, number one, Madrid is an artificial construct created by uh, Francis II, a French king. There is no Spain. It's really Valencia, Basque, Barcelona, as you know. And I wrote about Catalan breaking away. The problem in Spain will be that it had a civil war during the 30s, millions died, and it could have another civil war because the Catalans are not Spanish. They will fight if they have to, and Madrid doesn't have a national force that can really counteract it. What happens to tyrants is they see the, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. But in that premise, what people don't realize, it's the beginning of the end of the tyrant. The minute the tyrant exercises that kind of absolute power, like Obama's doing, like those henchmen around him, then it begins, it becomes the end of their dynasty and then the end of their tenure. What happens? Putin understands very well in the history of the Romanovs and the Tsars and Stalin. The only way the tyrants leave is through assassination or death. There is no other way. In the United States, we either assassinate our presidents, which we've done with LBJ. We had, you know, shootings, on, uh, which we did with JFK, and we warned LBJ not to continue. And we told Reagan that he has a problem, and then we went on and so forth. Things just don't happen by chance or accident. Now we have a corrupt government. We have an inept government. That's worse, because corruption may be needed in order to get systems going. It's just a degree of corruption. But when you have incompetence to the top, Susan Rice, Samantha Power, the Ben Rhodes, all those people who really have no idea what they're doing and they stood in one of those think tanks, it's time to get rid of all of them. The Trump, you know, attempt to come into the presidency is far more important than people realize, not only because he said the system is rigged, 
but he clearly articulated in words what you have been doing, what I have been doing, and many millions of others have said we're disgusted with the rig system. Nevertheless, the rig system continues. If Hillary comes in, my suspicion is there will be violence. I, you know, I can't uh, proffer it, but they know the people are listening to me that they were more than effective in handing me subpoenas, or when I, they felt I was out of control, they, had, they sent celico- helicopters above my house to give me a warning. Now, I don't have a problem fighting against for my nation, for my nation and our republic, because I had to fight overseas. But I call on our military to wake up. I call on our generals to stop worrying about their pensions and their liability. Right now, we have more generals who are on pension than active duty military officers, and that's a crime. And instead, we don't have an army that really is loyal to the republic. What the republic did and Obama did was a very shrewd and clever element. They create strategic tension all over the world so that our military is deployed, not because they have to fight for the republic, but it's a way of getting rid of our military domestically. So we're in 786 bases. Then you asked, why are these false flags occurring? You hit it on the head repeatedly when you said it was to round up our ammunition and guns. But there's a more serious reason and a more perfidious reason that I have maintained throughout, and that is what I wrote in the state of emergency. Our government can no longer justify its existence without creating strategic tension within our country. In other words, the federal government, sui generis, has no legitimacy. It has to create strategic tension so that it can mandate its federal troops. Sure, it has to make itself the hero and and, and violate jurisdictions. If you could do like four more minutes on the other side. I want to ask you, not as a pop psychiatrist, but also a medical doctor, uh, Harvard and MIT trained, I want to ask you just briefly about a Merkel, about an Obama, about, I mean, who these people are, why they're so dishonorable, why, I mean, I mean, the most scummiest people get in power. Stay right there, Dr. Pachanik, I'm Alex Jones, and then Jakari Jackson, Adon Salazar, and other reporters in the Valley, where the UN is ordering and directing uh, unnamed migrants to just be let in. Welcome back. Jakari Jackson and others are getting in place down in South Texas in McAllen, where the UN's running the illegal alien invasion. They actually, selling the news. The UN advised us. The UN comes in. They're illegal. And then we just put them on buses and ship them wherever they want. But when I came in from Isla Mujeres, took my children fishing for five, six days, uh, they interrogated every one of them and asked them, what'd you buy? What'd you do? Where'd you go? And the guy knew full well who I was. They had a big X on my uh, little, you know, computer printout when I went through that first, and, and, and as it does every time, and I got to be interrogated, uh, but if I'd have been wearing a burqa over my head, there wouldn't be any problem. And again, I'm not here to start some war with the Muslims, but if I can point out they've got rights I don't have, and this whole thing security theater, maybe I could get my freedoms back, because all I see with this police state is domesticating me, that I have no rights, I have no freedoms, and I need to worship some all-powerful centralized government. And that's why I'm trying to get people self-sufficient and trying to get folks to take action uh, and get involved in their communities to take back our nation by being productive, by being honorable. Now, we're going to go to our reporters here in a few minutes. But, Dr. Pachinik, uh, again, you're not just a pop psychologist. You're not just a psychiatrist, uh, you know, Harvard trained, MIT, uh, you know, politics, you name it. I'm going to go over your whole pedigree for listeners, but it's very extensive, uh, obviously. And they can't stand the fact you come on the show. I've been visited by the government about it. You've been visited and then people say, well, why don't you tell us all about it? Well, you did put the subpoena online and talk about it and go through it all. I, I just I just sit there and just you know leave it where it's at and, and, and just laugh at people, basically, because all I'm doing is basic good stuff. I'm a good guy and, and you know trying to save this country because I live here. My kids live here and, and, you know, my ancestors lived here. And I just really, you know, don't have it out for the average person. I just I, I just want to have a free nation. Uh, but but look at the psychology of the sycophants, the Obamas, the Hillarys. Uh, and others. I mean, they just want to mount America's head on the wall. They really are after the bitter clingers. They really hate people that are independent of any race, color, or creed. I mean, they they they, uh, they, they really do want to physically dominate what was Americana, even though that's what ends up generating the power of the nation that these parasites basically control and 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 siphon off of and ride to global control. So I don't understand the schizophrenic behavior or the self-destructive behavior of them just seeming like they're out to get us. I mean, they even say they are when their internal memos come out. 
Uh, a, is that correct? In just a few minutes on the psychology uh, of these people, as somebody that wrote the book on State Department psychological operations who helped get the Camp David Accord done and you know so much more. I mean, you really are somebody that actually knows what's going on, not pop garbage. So j j just a brief synopsis of these people. Well, number one, they're not crazy. Let, let's get it very clear, and your audience has to understand it. They're not schizophrenic. There's nothing psychotic about them. These are very willful, determined sociopaths. Sociopaths meaning that, by definition, they grew up not caring about guilt, responsibility, or accountability. So once you have that dynamic in there, you have entitlement. Once you have entitlement, that means that you should be voting for me. Then you go to pandering. The most like Obama and Hillary and, and Bill Clinton all have the same dynamic, sociopathy, lies of their histories, lies about their own self-identity, and basically they pander for favors. In turn, a, a system like the CIA or intelligence system can recruit them very quickly. When they're young, it was done with Obama because he was black, his mother was an operative, his grandfather was, his grandmother, and the same thing with Bill Clinton and Mena and throughout his own history when he had to go to Oxford and, and Strobe Talbot was his roommate who was classical CIA from Yale who cleaned up all the junk that Bill Clinton did and the same thing with Hillary who has her own sexual problems has a history of lesbianism has a history of entitlement corruption and ineptness once you have that dynamic the ability of the power of the state through covert actions is very easy to manipulate these people and bring in the necessary <laughs> say what we want you to do do what we want you to do and if you don't we'll get rid of you but the only way they're terminated is the same way putin understood about the romanovs about Tsar nicholas and about stalin they die or they leave office they cannot be uh they will not resign on their own Obama is not crazy, he's not sick, he's inept, he's arrogant, he's entitled, he's a sociopath, but there's nothing crazy about him. He's not very bright. The fact that he went to Occidental College, where all of my ex-CIA operatives teach, and the fact he did not go to Columbia, went to Harvard on affirmative action, means that he was there because he's black, and he can articulate all kinds of nonsense. Same thing with Bill Clinton. Never showed up at Oxford, was in Moscow, worked for the agency, reported to guys who were in the agency. Sure, so let me ask you this in closing, and I want to have you back up on this whole history sometime, because it's intriguing, sure. and I know what you're giving us is unfiltered, you know, from your own research, what you see is the truth, which from my research is incredibly accurate. It's just somebody you know, on the outside studying this and watching it closely. Who runs the CIA then? I mean, I know it was the Wall Street, the big mega banks that set it well, up. Well, it was. It was the Dulles brothers to begin with who worked with the Germans during World War II. Then it was James Jesus Angleton. It was the Wasps. Eventually it came to the Catholics in what we call Catholics in Action. In this particular case, over about 20 years, it's been John Brennan, who's been the special assistant to Obama and Bush Jr., who came out of Saudi Arabia, has a very checkered history of effectiveness. Even in the intelligence community, he's known as not being very effective. So we've got all these different but factions. We got the, and now, 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 is this this weird socialist stuff we're seeing out of Pope? The uh, Pope Francis, or, or, or is this well, a separate the Catholic? Pope Francis, as I told you and I told the audience, I knew him when he was the director of the Jesuits. He's a ruthless, cunning, pandering individual who doesn't deserve to be the Pope. And I have great respect for Catholics, but I have no respect for the Pope. He allowed two of his Jesuits to be arrested and several of the nuns to be killed. And I was asked to come in by the Argentinian colonels to help out, and I said no. I will not incarcerate 6,000 Catholics in Argentina. So the Pope is also one of those sociopaths who, instead of uh, coming through as, as grandiose, does the reverse, which is exactly grandiose. He says, oh, no, I'm not worthy, and then uses all of the nonsense about hope and well, faith. Well, I tell you, Dr. Pachinik, call reaction formation. I know when you talk about some of these... Yes, sir, I hate to interrupt you. I know when you talk about some of these histories, you literally have the FBI show up because... I mean, people can go oh, no, name. They'll come in, and so what? I mean, they've shown repeatedly over 30 years that they don't work for America. Sure, they I just want the audience to know, you're them. not making any of this stuff up. You really, you know, did know this pope. You you, you really did, were involved in what happened in, in, in big stuff in Italy. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go into it because I don't have the you know, Fed show up uh, over national security. Uh, it's just so amazing the stuff you've actually done.
versus all the people you know posing and acting like they've done all this stuff. It's amazing. And I do want to have you on about the book you wrote about your mother because it's so interesting historically. So you got to promise to do that too. Thank you, doctor. Yes, I will. Thank you, sir. That guy is so interesting, folks. I mean, it's just amazing. Um,